Hey Steve, it's Thursday, and I hope you had a great Christmas because I did. Look at what I got. Anyway, on to real business. Question one, how do I look for the coming of Christ? Honestly, this is probably one of the hardest parts of my walk with the Lord. I think I frequently forget that he's coming back. I do, however, have a sudden reminder of this whenever I'm on an airplane. As I said before, I become very aware of my mortality. In fact, remembering my death, as many of the saints have encouraged us to do so, is actually one way that I find it to be very helpful to look beyond myself toward the coming of the Lord. When I do remember that one day, no matter what, my world will come to an end, it helps me keep in perspective some of the choices I make. Unfortunately, remembering this is frequently hard to do amidst all the other goings on of life. It's so easy for me to get wrapped up into earthly care that I forget about the one thing needful, remembering to ask the Lord to remember me in the hour of my death. My desire to remember my death, however, is a reason that many people have actually accused me of being morbid. I like to think of it as being sober-minded. Remembering that I'm just dust, that I've been willed into existence by a merciful God, actually helps free me from the illusion that I'm trying to establish my own kingdom, and instead, I can start leaning toward Christ's. Question two, what am I doing to unite myself to Christ's humility? Not much. Question three, no, I'm kidding. But seriously, not much. And what irks me is that I frequently have the opportunity to do so in many arenas in my life. I frequently find myself in the wrong with my children or my wife, but it's still hard to ask for forgiveness because I don't like being in the wrong. I worry that if I get it wrong with these people that I love, that I don't have value to them, that I would just be letting them down, that I would be a failure. And it's hard to admit that you're a failure when you feel that your value comes from being a success. But I have so many opportunities to choose the route of humility, times when I'm not listening well or I become impatient. These are chances for me to admit that I'm wrong and that I still have a lot to learn. Or even when it comes to working for the church, I have plenty of opportunities for humility. But instead of choosing humility and admitting that there's things that I don't know, I try to outreason people. I feel like I'm good at making arguments, and so instead of admitting that I don't know something, I try to argue how I'm right. I hate that I do this. So if anything, I'm actually taking this question as a challenge to start admitting when I'm wrong or when I don't know something, to use that as an opportunity to practice this mindfulness of death. Because one day I'm gonna have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and so I better be used to admitting that I'm wrong by then, because that's probably the only thing that's going to save me, throwing myself, a miserable sinner, on the grace of God. Question three, what do I do when I feel discouraged or lose hope in the coming of Christ? Honestly, my first impulse is to complain to get mad and to complain, but I'm working on this. I'm trying to replace this complaining impulse with a desire to reach out, to find stabilization through relationship with others. Recently, I was complaining to you, Steve, and you just said, I know it's really hard for you to pray right now, so do you want me to pray for you? And so you did, and it was a healing balm to my weak soul. I needed that. Thank you. I think one of the most beautiful things about what it is to be the body of Christ is that we have prayer as a relational reality, a way that we can join ourselves to one another's lives, unlike any way that those in the world can. And so I think that this is what I need to do, to admit that I have a hard time praying, a hard time hoping, and to turn to those that I love and trust and ask them in humility if they can pray for me. Sure, this might sound Protestant, but I don't think it's fair that the Protestants get the market on praying for one another. We're baptized Christians. Why can't we commend one another to the Lord? So I guess this response is actually more of a challenge for me. I hope that I can live up to the remembrance of my death and practice it by admitting that I'm wrong and that I need help from others. All right, Steve, that's all I got. I'll see you on Monday.